Welcome to your Destiny Moments program. I'm so thankful to God for the privilege of communicating God's word to you today. You know, we are in this Holy Week and every day of this week had something specific that happened. So I, before we enjoy the Easter weekend, I want to speak about something that I believe is very, very important for us. Now, the first 20 chapters of the book of, of Matthew concentrates on the 33 years of Jesus' life and ministry. Eight chapters from chapter 21 to chapter 28 in the book of Matthew concentrates on the last week of the life of Jesus. And today I want to speak about a scripture from the book of Luke chapter 23 and I want to read verses 20, uh, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided these garments and cast lots. Now, if you're a Bible reader, you know the whole story. But today I want to speak about the poison of unforgiveness. The poison of unforgiveness. Now, Jesus experienced rejection. You know, in the last days of Jesus' life, they paraded him in a huge crowd and a murderer called Barabbas. People had to vote between Jesus the Savior and Barabbas the murderer. And you know that the murderer got more votes than Jesus. So if you're experiencing the pain of rejection, Jesus knows exactly what you are experiencing right now. Jesus was beaten. He was betrayed. Jesus was Ashamed. I mean, he died naked, strict on the cross. He was misunderstood. He was cursed. I mean, all this pain that Christ had to go through. Now, for him to make this prayer before he takes his last breath, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. To me, that shows me the power of forgiveness, but also a choice to get rid of the poison of unforgiveness. Now, forgiveness puts a new future before each one of us. In the same book of Luke chapter 20, 20, 23, verses 42 to verse 43, you know he was crucified between two murderers or criminals. One cursed him, one mocked him. I mean, he's right next to destiny that was eternal, but he never took advantage of that. Now the other criminal said, Lord, have mercy upon me and remember me when you come in your kingdom. And straight away, Jesus put a pause on his own pain and he began to minister to this man. And he told him that today you will be with me in paradise. Now, that's what forgiveness come, does. A man who was destined to go to hell within a few moments because of forgiveness was given a new future. So Jesus' prayer and ministry, plus all the pain that they had to go through. We see him saying, Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Now, when you walk in forgiveness, forgiveness is that one act that allows you to imitate God himself, the original master forgiver. And forgiveness is spiritual filthiness. Can't you get in Uganda? Or what a son you Obango muntu akiriza kazambi, filthiness, to fill your life. You don't want to live with filth of unforgiveness in your life. And that's why every one of us needs the cleansing through the word of God. Now, forgiveness can be a struggle for most people. But if you do not make a choice to forgive, it can be that one of the greatest hindrances to destiny in life People behave in ways that are going to offend us. But holding a grudge might feel natural. You know, if someone abuses you, someone curses you, someone takes advantage of you, someone moves in, breaks your ministry, breaks your marriage, it, I mean, it feels natural to hold a grudge against such people or situations. But the Bible encourages us to walk in forgiveness. Now, recent studies on forgiveness show that practicing forgiveness can improve our mental health 
and our physical health. Now listen to this. How do I practice forgiveness? How do I make a choice to forgive the offenders? Now, the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. I think that the first step is to understand what the Bible talks about forgiveness. If Jesus Christ was hanging naked at Calvary, still had time to forgive before he breathed his last, that shows us the importance of walking in forgiveness. Now, in the book of John chapter 5 and verse 14, I mean from verse, four, from verse 1, Jesus walks to this pool. He heals the man who had been an, an, an invalid for 38 years. The man rejoices with a miracle, but he never recognized Jesus. Later on in John 5 verse 14, he met him in the temple and he told him, sin no more, lest our thing may happen to you. In other words, if this man continued sinning, he was going to get something worse than what had happened the previous 30 over 30 years. Forgiveness is so crucial. For, and forgiveness is the number one cause of marital problems. Problems in politics, wars between nation and nation. People poisoning each other, murdering each other, torturing each other, kidnapping each other. The cause is hearts that are loaded with the filth of unforgiveness. I'll give you a few scriptures about forgiveness and forgiveness from scriptures because when we have the right knowledge of scriptures, forgiveness will become natural for us when we totally depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 28 and verse 13, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. So when you conceal your sin, you don't ask for forgiveness, or you don't forgive other people, the Bible says you will not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Now I'm not talking about, I'm not saying that whoever is prospering materially is walking in forgiveness. I mean, even the devil himself, when you walk in bitterness and revenge, he can give you what you want. After all, his greatest desire is to take control of your soul and finally take you to hell. Psalms 32 and verse 5. Then I acknowledge my sins, my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgive the, you forgive the guilt of my sin. Now, this is David after he had sinned with Bathsheba and murdered her husband. James 5:16. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now I want you to see the connection between the forgiveness of sins and healing. The verse goes on to say that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Not every prayer is powerful and effective. It is only the prayer of a righteous person. And a righteous person is one that has sought forgiveness and that walks in forgiveness. Luke 6, 37. Do not judge that will not be judged. Do not condemn that will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Ephesians chapter 3, chapter 4, sorry, in verses that went to verse 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. You'll be amazed at how many people are going to get angry over this weekend, Easter weekend. But the Bible is saying that get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. If I can give you one message over this Easter weekend, the message is, let us understand what Jesus did at the climax of his earthly life. Before he breathed his last, after going through all the pain and is now experiencing the most, uh, the most powerful pain of his life, he still had time to pray a prayer of forgiveness. I cannot even imagine. If he had not forgiven us, what would have happened? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And forgiveness, I've already mentioned, is the number one cause of broken relationships at home, at work, in ministry, in politics, business, name it. And I believe that 
the number one cause again of murder, witchcraft, every kind of torture, people pouring acid on each other, people murdering their own wives and putting them in sewage tanks. The number one cause, it is hearts that are filled with a poison of unforgiveness. Forgiving someone is not the same as ignoring the evil that someone has done against your life. It is not excusing people that offend us and breaking our hearts. Oh, praise God. Forgiving someone is to look at the horrible thing that someone has done against your life, against your wife, against your children, against your marriage, against your ministry, against whatever you have invested in. You look at the horrible things done or said by someone, but then you choose, consciously make a choice not to hold it against that person or to even try to revenge against them. I want to conclude by saying, when it comes to forgiveness, it comes down to the choices that you and I make. You make a choice whether to suffer the consequences of unforgiveness, as we shall, as, as we shall be looking at it later, or to walk out of being offended into your freedom. Listen to what God says. I believe as we look at the whole of scriptures, forgiveness is the best way to deal with your enemies. Forgiveness is the best way to deal with a memory of wrongful pain in your life. Now, someone is in this service today and you have pain in your heart. You have pain because someone has betrayed you. You have pain, it's like you are hanging at Calvary, you are hanging on a cross. Someone has maliciously crucified you. Let us follow the example of Jesus Christ this Easter weekend. Let us make a choice and forgive the offenders. And you know what happens? When I say I forgive you, I'm doing myself a favor. Some people do think that, well, how come someone offends me and I'm the one to bear the pain of forgiving them? When you choose to forgive like Jesus Christ did, you are helping yourself first, one. And number two, you are getting off the throne of judgment and you are allowing God to sit on the throne and deal with your offender. And God knows how to deal with your offenders more than you can deal with them. Now, before I pray for you, I want to ask you if you are in this service, we are about to go into this Easter weekend, a weekend of resurrection, the foundation of our Christian faith. My question is, have your sins been forgiven? Have you gone to God in brokenness and asked him to forgive your sins? If you haven't, I want to lead you into a prayer of repentance. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the gift of life. I know I am a sinner. And today I confess all my sins. And Jesus, I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Now put your hands on your chest as I pray for you. Now, if you have genuinely asked for forgiveness, your sins have been forgiven by God. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you. Now, the next step is for you to experience peace and joy and prosperity and healing in your life. Are you holding a grudge against anyone that has said or done something against your life? If you want freedom right now, I want to pray that God gives you the grace to forgive those people. Will you accept that grace? If you will, with your hand in your chest, let me pray. Father God, I thank you so much because someone in this service has a broken heart. Someone has said or done something that has disorganized their relationships, their marriages, their offices, their career, their ministries. But I pray today that we'll give that person grace to forgive. And as they forgive, let healing flow, let freedom flow, let miracles flow in their lives. Healing of marriages and relationships. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you so much and I wish you a great Easter weekend.